Rocco De Spirito is one of the most famous chefs in America, so why was he banned from stepping foot in his own restaurant? For many people, slinging pizzas is just a good first job to get a little spending money, rather than the stepping stone to a career as a chef. But most people aren't Rocco De Spirito, who got his first job in a pizzeria when he was just 11 years old. The reason he initially got the job, though, is the stuff legends are made of. De Spirito told ChefWorks he began working at a pizza place because he wanted to buy a Kiss album, and his 75 cent a week allowance was just going to take too long. When he told his mother he wanted more money per week and why he wanted it, she told him to get a job if he insisted on procuring the degenerate album. So he did, and the rest is history. Anthony Bourdain, Anne Burrell, Rocco De Spirito. One thing they all have in common is that they all graduated from the Culinary Institute of America, which is no surprise given their stature in the world of cooking. What might be surprising, however, is the fact that De Spirito attended the Culinary Institute of America when he was only 16 years old. Attendance at such an institution represents a necessary part of the dues-paying process for those who will be A-list chef restaurant owners one day. Although the Culinary Institute of America's tuition isn't cheap, most industry experts agree that attending the institute is worth the price because of the doors that a CIA education continues to open. The CIA routinely lands on the best of lists in industry publications like Full Service Restaurant Magazine, as well as on renowned college prep websites like Prep Scholar, ensuring its place among the best foodie training schools in America. But De Spirito's education didn't end with his stint in culinary school. He went on to get a bachelor's degree in hospitality administration and management from Boston University, giving the famous chef the educational and practical knowledge he needed to advance his career in the food industry. In 1988, two years before he graduated from Boston University, De Spirito exercised his gourmet chops at Adrienne in the Peninsula Hotel in New York, where he worked under seasoned chefs. Following that, it was Chef Mark Baker that taught De Spirito French-Asian fusion. De Spirito also opened his own restaurant, the short-lived Dava, landing him on the list of the most ambitious grads of the Culinary Institute of America. De Spirito's unique fusion style seemed like a match made in foodie heaven for a brand new fusion restaurant called Union Pacific, which opened in 1997. The restaurant's menu fell on the side of pure, unadulterated Rocco. One critic gave De Spirito's cooking at Union Pacific three stars in the New York Times review, along with the exclamation that pretty much everything on De Spirito's menu was wonderful and a thing of beauty that came from some other place. For a time, Union Pacific was the place to be. Depending on how you look at it, here is a sad or happy fact. The closest most of us will ever get to rubbing elbows with a famous chef will come via the voyeuristic peek that our television sets provide for us. That's how most of us got to know Rocco De Spirito via his 2003 TV show, The Restaurant, when he opened his Italian restaurant called Rocco's. But what a look it was. The opening credits of the show introduced foodie reality TV fans to Rocco's world, including to his mother, Nicolina De Spirito, who the TV chef positioned in the kitchen as chief meatball maker to give the place an air of authentic Italian culture and cooking. For those who work in the restaurant business, the behind-the-scenes look at the opening of a restaurant equals the stuff of nightmares. A seemingly cursed restaurant location, staff friction, and friction between De Spirito and financier Jeffrey Chattero made for great television but not-so-great working conditions. By 2004, De Spirito had been served with an injunction that prevented him from stepping foot into the restaurant that bore his name. In 2006, Rocco De Spirito began training for the super race to end all races, Iron Man. The TV chef found himself facing some big obstacles even before he laced up his sneakers. 30 pounds of extra weight insisted on hanging onto his frame. However, this became a blessing in disguise. De Spirito changed his diet as he trained for the race. He made his favorite recipes, but he began substituting fattening ingredients with low-cal, high-nutrient-dense foods. If this being an Iron Man is about ordinary people doing extra ordinary things. Wow, you never met a more ordinary guy. One thing led to another, and De Spirito was inspired to write a series of weight loss books. Eventually, the Pound a Day Diet book became the Pound a Day Meal Delivery Service. The program takes all the guesswork out of following a nutrition plan by morphing it into a meal delivery service that's designed to help people lose weight following the principles De Spirito learned on his weight loss journey. The diet requires people to eat 850 calories daily during the week and 1,200 calories on the weekends during phase one. 
During phase two, more food makes its way to the dieter's plate, and an emphasis on learning to eat healthier for the rest of the dieter's life takes center stage. In an interview with People, Despirito recommends people follow the Mediterranean diet upon completion of the diet in order to maintain their weight loss. You're basically turning your metabolism into a jet rocket. After Despirito was booted from his own restaurant, he didn't work in a restaurant kitchen again for 15 years. In 2018, he joined the Standard Grill in New York City for their 10-year anniversary, where he had a chance to marry the healthy cooking he'd adopted with a restaurant atmosphere. He told the New York Post that the temporary gig gave him the chance to try out cooking with fresh garden produce and grass-fed beef and to add new and important elements to fine dining restaurant cooking. The collaboration between Despirito and the Standard Grill, which ended in 2019, was an excellent excellent opportunity to demonstrate that he still had what it took to run a restaurant kitchen. However, that's not to say that Despirito spent those 15 years being idle. He penned numerous cookbooks. He also spent a lot of time working with charities like City Harvest and Feeding America, fighting food insecurity in New York City, and visiting different schools to teach kids about nutrition. He even served them lunch during his visits. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics website suggests that more than 40 million American adults have taken on the responsibility of caring for an elderly relative. However, stats like these don't become real until they have a face attached to them, such as Despirito. In 2005, Despirito's mother had a heart attack, and Despirito became her primary caregiver until she passed away in 2013. Despite having the help of home health aides, the stress and strain from his caretaking tasks damaged the TV chef's health. At one point, he required required back surgery to correct the issues that a lifetime of working in a kitchen, as well as the responsibility of taking care of his mother, brought on. The back surgery left him in a wheelchair for some time. In cooking school, Rocco Despirito learned how to cook. But Despirito has said in interviews that he also wishes that he had learned more about the social aspect of working in restaurants. Building relationships with the staff really wasn't a part of his culinary school curriculum. But Despirito believes that relationship building is an important part of both front of the house and back of the house operations. He told ChefWorks, the kitchen's really about camaraderie. Despite coming across as very charming and chatty in interviews, Despirito revealed that he dealt with anxiety very early on in life and began seeing a therapist to help him conquer his anxiety by the time he rolled through second grade. His natural reluctance to chat it up with the guests in his restaurants led him down an unexpected path, acting. An acting coach helped develop some scripted talking points that allowed Despirito to interact with guests before he opened up Union Pacific Restaurant. Given that much of his career since has been spent on television as a celebrity chef, it's fair to say that his lessons paid off, and he's even gotten a couple actual acting gigs. Rocco, this is Richard Castle. I ought to punch you in the face, Castle, for killing Derek Storm like that. For many food service workers today, achieving work-life balance is an extremely difficult challenge. As it turns out, Rocco Despirito finds the whole work-life balance thing elusive, telling ChefWorks that he works way too much. But while 73% of workers say that they consider work-life balance to be so important that they'll base their job choices on whether or not a prospective job provides them with it, Despirito has come up with another solution entirely to the issue. He suggests that maybe a work-life balance is overrated if you love what you do. He definitely proves the saying, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. For a guy who has dedicated most of the pages of his 13 cookbooks to healthy living and weight loss, you'd think Rocco Despirito would have conquered the guilty pleasure beast that so many of us fight against daily. But the celebrity chef hasn't completely done away with his own personal guilty pleasures list, telling ChefWorks, I'm extremely in love with pizza, with whiskey, with Chinese takeout. And we're not talking about any ordinary Chinese takeout. If it's way greasy and way late at night when he's eating it, all the better. But even that pales in comparison to his guiltiest pleasure, the bacon bowl, a number that combines layers of tater tots, cheese, and bacon baked to searing deliciousness in the oven. Despirito said, It's such trash, but it's so good. Fame is fickle, and for someone like Rocco Despirito, who became famous because of a TV show, it'd be tempting to think that his legacy begins and ends with the restaurant. But he doesn't see it that way. In fact, he maintains that his legacy is so much more than a TV show that ran for a year. It doesn't count among the top things he'd like to be known for. Instead, as a chef, he wants people to remember the food that he makes for them. He told ChefWorks that he can still remember making specific dishes, and he wants his guests to remember his food just as clearly. Aside 
Aside from that, he also wants people to remember the impact his work has made on the health and wellness world, especially his healthy living cookbooks like Rocco's Keto Comfort Food Diet and the Pound a Day Diet, which have helped people become their best physical selves. What do you think is the biggest problem today in, our, in the food industry? No one is interested in producing healthy and affordable food. Given the flash-in-the-pan nature of fame, it's easy to forget that most careers last longer than the TV shows that portray them. For Rocco Despirito, his culinary career has endured for 40-plus years, demonstrating his commitment to the food world and his place in it. While it remains to be seen if he'll wear the title of head chef at another restaurant in the future, there is no indication that he plans to slow down his foodie career activities. In an interview with Mashed, Despirito said that he has explored working more with technology as a means to track health and wellness and his most recent ventures have seen him work on a one-on-one -on -one basis with a number of clients in the New York City area. Despirito guides them as they learn to make better choices for their health, work that he plans to continue in the future. And on a more personal note, he'll also indulge the passion for cooking and all the sensorial experiences that come with it. His next book, Rocco Happy at Home, invites readers to indulge in the pleasures of cooking at home. For someone who named his first book Flavor, his current book looks less at the healthy part of eating and more at the delish part of eating, bringing him full circle on his professional foodie journey.